Now this is playing up this machine. This laptop. I was just making a video. Now to start all over again. It was rather boring. So I'll make it more interesting. I'll pick the interesting parts. Yeah, I said I had Navajo Indian blood in me. No. They've got my blood in them. My Siberian blood. They're the same sub paid as me. But apparently my lot stayed in Siberia for quite a while. Some of them moved to different parts, like Korea. I think some moved as far as Tibet. And um, a lot of them crossed the Bering Strait into the Americas. And the Navajo have got the same subclade as me. Mitochondrial DNA D. And then there's in brackets, there's some more numbers and figures. My subclade going back quite a few thousand years. Oh, and the other thing, well, there's going to be quite a few things. The most interesting part of my body is my extra nipples. And when I tell people this, they cringe in horror. But let me say, they do not look like real nipples. They are, I've got four of them, and they're symmetrical, and they follow the milk line. It's quite rare in humans, but it does occur. Um, I went to the doctors years ago about these things. I thought they were moles. And I thought, oh, they don't look right because they've got a little, like a little nipple thing on it. It was like a brown spot, a little brown spot, mole, like a normal frock, like a normal mole or a big freckle. And it had a little tiny lip, nipple on it. And the doctor said, no, don't worry, it's just extra nipples, nothing to worry about. Anyway, when I was breastfeeding my son for two weeks, Johnny, um, I liked the bonding of the breastfeeding, but I wasn't, he was feeding like for half an hour on each breast. It was ridiculous. I don't think I was producing enough milk. Anyway, I thought, I didn't even know about the extra nipples then, but I didn't look. I didn't look to see if they were producing milk it's possible that maybe they were and maybe just like a few little droplets something like that and people say oh how can you mention something like that on um youtube well it's just part of the body you know me i love talking about the body especially about the bowels things like that don't worry me i also made, made a brilliant nurse and a brilliant gastroenterologist. Uh, those toys, especially that poo maker, I don't know how it even got through to being a toy. You know, who made who made the decision that it would be a good toy? I haven't made a bear out of it yet, but I will, and I'll show it to you. Anyway, I thought it was... For a child of about seven and onwards. But after I made that video, I had a look at the box. And it said three, three years plus. Three years. No, dangerous, dangerous. Um, yeah. Oh, my mind's gone blank. Oh, no. What else was I was talking about the flooring, but I've mentioned that so often. I won't mention that again. I did mention the Mongolian death worm. Unfortunately, it was a load of made-up rubbish, just like the mermaids. I did consider doing one about the Loch Ness Monster, but apparently there's a better one in Canada. It's more realistic, and there's been more photos of it. The only thing is, it looks like a like an otter. 
So it probably is an otter. And the Yeti, Sasquatch, I'm not sure about him or her. Well, there must be a group of them, mustn't there? I'm not sure. I think I do believe in the Yetis. And they're scattered in various parts of the world. Uh, I'll go through my notebooks because then I might come up with something interesting. Oh, that curry, by the way. Me and Morris both liked it. It had the 70s feel about it when they used to like, and the 80s, cooking with um, soup and booze. Very popular ingredients. Yeah, my mum used to make this nice Indian cut, well, Indian curry. I've got to ask her for the recipe if she can remember. It was made from beef, but I don't know what type of beef. Stewing beef, I'm not sure. And she used to put that you could in those days you could get mango chutney, which you can still buy, obviously. She'd put a little bit of that in, and sometimes she used something called apple chutney, which I haven't been able to find. I don't think they do it anymore, but I like the sound of that. And she used to put I think they were raisins, the black ones, or was it currants? <coughs> I think it was black raisins. I still love that curry. It was really good. Nothing like an Indian curry, but it was a typical 70s meal. Love it. Right. I think it's best to go to my older notebooks. Oh, my jacket, yeah, I just got that out of the washing machine. Did I tell you about it? Because um, Morris wanted to clean a chamois leather, which is basically deer hide, isn't it? Chamois is a type of um, deer, and it's hide. Uh, so it's... I don't like the idea of using... Shammy leather because it's an animal skin. It's yellow and when it's wet it's soft. It's meant to be really good for cleaning certain things like like cars and windows. And um when it's dry it's hard. You can stand it up. They said, Can I put this in a washing machine? I said, well, what's on it? Is that oil? He said, no, it's just different stains. Don't know what ones he mentioned. I said, all right, but I'm not just going to put one item in the washing machine. It's a waste of money. I think I'll put my jacket in there, my red jacket. That I wear all the time when I go out. I don't like it, but I, I just can't find a jacket. A lightweight jacket that looks good on me. I thought, all right, I'll put my jacket in with it. And it's one of these that's got... And actually, I'll show it to you. You see it? Can you see how it's sewn all over to make a pattern? Oh, can you see that? That little yellow bit. But I'll tell you, this is a lot better. I'll be able to wear this now. I do need a new jacket though. This isn't... This does look quite good on me, but... <coughs> it's getting a bit old now. 
but they were stuck, completely stuck. And I was trying to pick them up, but that would have taken me about 10 years. So I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I said to Morris, it wasn't his fault, really. It wasn't his fault. I said, oh, Morris, if these yellow balls don't come off, would you be able to get me a jacket tonight in Sainsbury's? Just a lightweight jacket. And he said, yeah, of course I will. So that was nice of him. Uh, yeah, we do have our ups and downs in our long relationship. But we're all, all, we like to be, we've got this thing, we like to be boring. And we try and outdo each other on how boring we can be. Uh, one day we were in Croydon. We just like to go down to these run-down places. I just love to go to anywhere in South East London. And uh, Croydon does come under South East London. Uh, even though it's in Surrey. We um, went into a bakery shop and there was seating. So you could eat your cake and drink your tea at the same time. I think Morris had coffee. I think we both had coffees actually. I can't remember what the cakes were, but, you know, there's a lot of silences between us because we don't, we don't have a lot in common. So the only thing we really have in common is saying boring things, just boring things that pop into our mind. And he said, oh, can you see that paper out there, that little piece of paper? I said, where? He said, over there, it's twirling around in the in the breeze, in the wind. <laughs> I said, Morris, that's the most boring thing I've <laughs> <coughs> 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 Sorry about that, that's smoking. Yeah. Mm. Phlegm. Sorry, I'm not a lady like at all. Yeah, that was really boring. But I've said even worse, more boring things than that before. Uh, and he was like, shut it. I'm not getting too boring. Shut it. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching this documentary on YouTube, this film. It was from Channel 4. I don't I think it was I think it was on the telly in in the nineties, something like that. It was in set in sixty nine documentary in London somewhere. And it was about people that were very poor and they didn't earn a lot of money. They worked hard but they didn't earn a lot of money. Um, and there was a lot of damp, uh, a very large amount of damp all over there, small houses or flats, and, you know, they just lived a very poor life. They couldn't afford trips to the cinema or going to the pub or anything like that. Hard life. Well, I was amazed at how neatly dressed they were. And they'd go to the laundrette. But it was nothing like the laundrettes you get now. It was like a big industrial laundrette. And the women would have, all have these big tubs where they do all the hand washing. And I, don't, I think there must have been a spin dryer as well. And then they'd put it through like a mangle type thing. I mean, I thought this was like Victorian times, what I was watching. It was 1969, and there was an ironing machine, which I thought was good. And they just put the garment, fold it up a little bit into a nice shape, and put it through the ironing. It just slid through this iron and came out crease-free at the end. 
but it was very, very hard work. And uh, I was, what really took up, uh, all the women, all right, they weren't glamorous or anything, but they took pride in their appearance. They looked very clean. Hair uh, was mostly styled very neatly that they'd done themselves. And clothing, immaculate, not fashionable or anything like that. Of course, it was in black and white, unfortunately. And I was surprised at the lovely way they spoke. It wasn't really Cockney. It was had an edge of Cockney to it. But it was completely different from the way people speak today. <coughs> it was almost middle class. <coughs> <coughs> It was almost like how the aristocracy spoke. I was really surprised. And that's how people spoke then. Yeah. I don't know what part of London it is, obviously. It probably wasn't the East End. I think the Cockney accent was confined to the East End. All right, then. Uh... I'm, I'm going to pause the video again to try and think of something to say. Yeah, I'm getting confused now because I made a video before this one. I don't know if I mentioned the toy. The toys, the poo one. Yeah, it's for three children of three years old and over. And that really really surprised and shocked me um i think that will be taken off the market um yeah but not a good thing what else yeah see this is what my days are like boring how am i gonna spend the rest of the day oh uh, tidying up I might have a nap. I know it's awful, isn't it? And think about making my next film video. Well, it's not going to be a film video. I've got these interesting pictures of cats that I got from an AI generator. So I thought I'd make a nice, unusual video using those pictures. Because I really like picture editing at the moment. That's what I really like. I think I like it more than actually making videos. I've now got a male. A proper male's head and shoulders. For when I make those videos where people are talking. And I'm the woman. I'm always the main character, obviously. But now I've got a real man. And he's an actor. And an author. So I'm excited about using his face in one of my videos. I'll probably give him a moustache or hat. It depends what era it's going to set in. Set in. But I've got to write the script. I don't want a straightforward love story. Like, oh, let's meet again. You know, end of story. They meet in a cafe. They fall in love with each other straight away. And then they exchange their dresses or whatever, if it's set in the old days, you know. Well, should we meet in the park um, at the bandstand at, say, 11 a.m. 11 on Tuesday morning? Something like that. No, it's not going to be like that. No more time travel, no. It has to have a twist in it. It has to have a twist. That's the hardest part. So I'm going to think of something with my actor friend and me. We we meet. We meet. Actually, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It could be that we know each other. So that might be a more interesting thing. We know things about each other. And I could involve a little bit of blackmail into the story. 
they could actually be having an affair. Something like that. Something to spice it up. Yeah. So I'm going to work on that. And the other thing I really wanted to say, and the real, the real reason I wanted to make the video in the first place, I remember now, is that I think I'm making too many videos and not concentrating on other things that I should be concentrating on, like getting all my health problems sorted out and looking at my diet. I think I've lost a little bit of weight from mainly my face and the boobies, unfortunately. So I can't decide what fat to lose. It's... It's down to Mother Nature, and unfortunately, when you lose weight, it always goes first on from your face, and if you're a woman, your breasts, which is a real shame. Uh, I rather like being this size. I just don't like the apron of fat. I can't even locate my hips. Because I never really had hips. I was like this. Sort of straight up and down. But I had a big bottom. Always had a big bottom. Not ginormously big. But plump. And that was one of my best features. But now it's like a square. A square with a line running down it. Square shaped. Um, I want to look good in my belly. When I buy my belly dancing clothes, I want to look good in it. I don't want to look like a joke. So, oh, liposuction. Mm -hmm. Would that help? Would I do it? Because it's drooping down. The fat's not where it's meant to be. It's just drooping down like an apron. Yeah, it's horrible. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this video now. I've got quite a few things to do. I don't want to do any of them. But I've got to force myself. And I think I'm going to make myself a nice, strong cup of coffee. And that will give me some energy. Alright, I hope you like this video. Um, I'm, I need to give it a good name where it's going to attract viewers. So I'll be thinking about what I'm going to call it in a minute. Something exciting, clickable. Yeah, all right then. I hope you liked it. I'm in a quite good mood today. Just wanted to do a video, just got the urge. And when I get the urge to do something, I usually do it. All right then. See you soon and take care. Bye.